Warning, the show you are about to listen to contains spoilers. Listen at your own risk. Welcome to the Port Charlie Podcast, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and Namio could not make it with us again this week. Uh, she had some appointments she had to take care of, and it's like, yeah, it's either that or come do this show, and she doesn't get paid for this, but then again, technically, I kind of don't. I have the Patreon, but that's not really much, but anyway, point is, she couldn't make it, so we have uh, Julia with us again this week. Hello, I'm Julia at gh-musings on Tumblr, and um, I am thrilled to be back for the second time on the podcast. Yay! So, uh, yeah, and and I do want to say right here on the show that, that I do plan, when Namio is able to do that, we will keep Julia on and we'll, we'll do like the three-person thing, because that is, that is my full intent, because it'll be, it, it, having the two having two people is great having three people can get that much more conversation out of it and and there's three different opinions it's 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 pretty great oh so this week where do we start oh dear <laughs> oh uh, well, I, well go ahead yeah, well i was just gonna say before we officially started we started talking about lucas Yes. On how there's the seeds of a storyline, hopefully, for him that were laid this week. Um, Brad meeting Bobby mm-hmm. was fun. Um, they mentioned Tony. They talked about Lucas's uh, work. So I, I didn't realize this. He hadn't. He went to med school, but hasn't actually been working as a doctor. Um, so maybe we'll get him in at GH soon. Get some more doctors actually on the show that's named after a hospital. Yeah, that would. That would be a thing. That would be good because it's like, what was I was like all throughout the two thousands. It was like mostly mob related stories and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, god damn, you know. I mean, I know you can't have it completely in the hospital, but still, it's like there's less of a focus on that, but more on the, on the on the rest of the town and even out of town, uh, which there there's focus on that nowadays. But it seems to have mellowed out a little bit from what I'm understanding how the two thousands were. Well, beyond, like, the Cassidines rising back up and Stavros falling down the bottomless pit. <laughs> you know, which happened in the early 2000s, but... Uh. So, yeah, I, and, and I'll admit, I did not know that about Lucas. Uh, surprising to learn about it, and I was like, yeah, I, I could see it. Uh. And and I love I love the entire thing where Bobby's just going on and on and on and on and on, and she and Lucas are arguing, and Brad's just sitting there like, uh... Uh, uh. <laughs> well, and he's probably not done this before, or at least not in a very long time. You know, the whole meeting the parents thing. Yeah. So that's that's a nice uh, stepping stone in their in their very adorable little relationship. Yes. And the thing is, Brad, when I first saw him, so I first started getting to know him, I was like, oh god, can we just beat the crap out of him and go on? But <laughs> but he and Britt, he and Britt, oh, you know, they've had this character development thing going on, and I've been enjoying it. They they went from people that I really just want to slap to people that I kind of cheer for. Exactly. No, there the other week was it? The, I can't even remember if this was this week or last week when Britt told Brad that she was moving out, and they had that very kind of sweet moment where they're like really sad to be not living together anymore because they are such good friends. Yeah, it's and it's very cute. It is. It's like yay! He went from flunky to best friend, and it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and and I do and I do like how I do like how Brad handled everything. I mean, it, at the end of the day, he he was mostly like, you know what? It's it's up to him if he wants to go and put his medical degree to use. He was a little shocked at it, but it's like, yeah, you know, put it to use if you want to. No. And and I think Brad is an excellent example um, of 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 that character development that you were mentioning done mm-hmm. right. Because I am I am all for redemption storylines and and soaps tend to pull that a lot yeah. they'll introduce a kind of villainous character like Brit and, and Brad initially and mm-hmm. then you know the work to make them likable which is I think what is not to segue or anything but I'm totally <laughs> segueing into Franco because they've utterly failed to hold them accountable as they sort of try to do this whole redemption thing with, with Carly whereas Brad has never 
made excuses for what he's done, or he's made excuses, but the, the narrative still holds him accountable for everything that he did in his part in what happened to Lulu, and, and Lucas and the narrative held him accountable for that. Yeah. And with Franco and Carly, and I love that they talked about it this week, Carly talked about how she initially didn't believe Franco at all with the, the videos and everything and all that, and I'm just like, girl, trust your instincts, because um, he's, he's totally pulling this shit with her, and I know we talked about this a little last week, but I just thought of an excellent example to sort of clarify what I was saying last week, because I kept thinking about it after the show, and it's like, if you're in a relationship with someone, mm-hmm. and you, two consenting adults, share, say, like, nude pictures or sexy pictures with each other, mm-hmm. and then the relationship breaks up, you know, there's a level of trust, you know, that even when you break up, you're not going to go, like, putting those pictures online as you know, certain terrible people are want to do, to do. And that's kind of what Franco's doing. He claims he loves her, but he's about to throw, like, a bomb in the middle of her life. Yeah, and and a metaphorical one, I believe. So. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully. <laughs> metaphorical bomb. Yeah, because this is, this is a soap opera. It could be literal ones, but no, not in this <laughs> case. Uh, and and the, way I'm see- the way I'm seeing it, yeah, it, there isn't much to be held accountable for. Well, not much. I, I've worded that wrong. He hasn't been held accountable much. I I am trying to say. I English good. I promise. I promise. Um, and so with the way the narrative is taken and written, it it's it's seeming to me more like you know just a tragedy. That yeah, okay, he he's back and and he's trying to make amends. And at first he's you know he's scheming. He's trying to get his claws into Yale Q, and he, he's pulling all this other stuff. And then there's Toomer. He goes crazy. He thinks he sees things. Almost commits suicide. Carly talks him down. And I think at that point, that's what kind of starts his his whole thing with Carly is that you know uh, she saved his life. Right. And that that was a fantastic moment. I actually really loved that mm-hmm. at the time because you know it was Carly sort of connecting with what she thought was her last sort of connection to Jason in a way. Yeah. And I thought that was a really complex, really fascinating moment for both of them. It's everything that's come since that I've been having a problem with. Yeah, and then the tumor gets taken out and used in court. And somehow Diane is able to argue that because of the tumor, he was that much of a sociopath and a killer. Oh. It's like, I can't even I, – I cannot defend that. Mm-mm. It's just no, no. But – Legally, people have done stupider things in reality legally, so, you know, whatever, (laughs) you know, and, and for a while it seemed like Franco, yeah, he's a bit freaky, he's a bit weird, uh, and, and all of that, but he seemed relatively harmless, you know, Mm -hmm. unless he's, like, threatened or, or, like, his relationship is threatened. Right. You know, like his... So not, so harmless-ish, but I wouldn't say stable. Yeah. At all. Right. And 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 he's from what I saw of him, he's genuinely trying to do better within you know, within his own parameters. I've always said Franco is insane but not stupid. Yeah, that's an excellent way to put it, within his parameters. I like that. Yeah. And and he is and and it doesn't help when like there was a point where he was trying to go find a job. He ha- found it hard to find a job when nobody really wants him around and justifiably so i'm not gonna mm-hmm. deny that but it makes it that much more difficult for him when you see him on the screen genuinely trying and he's trying and he's trying he's trying to make this work with carly and then car and then then he sees carly go off and and do this stuff with sunny and and yeah he has a jealous streak you know ava knows it i i think he's admitted it you know and and so of course that flares up when he sees Carly with Sonny who he sees as a rival because of you know Carly and Sonny's history right you know. well and, and the you know not so much history as the recent evidence that he saw of them having sex like just now yeah well well <laughs> this is this is this all leads up to that but, oh, um, got it. yeah <laughs> so and and you know that whole jealousy started even before he figured out yeah they were boning they had boned right, a few okay. times. So, so you know, but once that point was reached, it was like, he was like, you know what? She, she don't love me. She, she doesn't care. You know, he, he kind of snapped oh, a bit. Uh, okay, I say a bit. Mm-hmm. And, 
and with that snapping, it's like all of that good, all of that good direction he was going with that the writers were taking him in the in that path of redemption. It, it's kind of just fizzling away. You know, I think it's kind of like the sort of opposite arc of when you take a, a more of a protagonist type quote good character Mm -hmm. um and have them kind of hit rock bottom and then have to fight their way back up it's like they took him sort of as high as franco could really get Mm -hmm. and now they're about to plunge him back into being more of an antagonist which which i really really am excited about um because i am so excited for franco and nina Mm -hmm. there's scenes uh, i think it was just on friday at the very end um I mean, that conversation about the terrible things that they were planning to exact on on other people in their lives, it felt like foreplay or something. I thought they were... I mean, I was seriously surprised they weren't ripping off each other's clothes by the end of that scene. I know, right? (laughs) It was great. The critics... No, go ahead. Both both of the actors have some really good chemistry going on there, uh, and it shows. It really shows. (laughs) They're so well-suited to each other because they... They take each other's uh, it quirks is too light, but you know what I mean. They take it all in stride, and she's like, "Oh, I thought you would think differently of me." And he's like, "What are you kidding? Like, look what I'm about to do." And they're yeah. just totally on board with each other's kind of mm, villainy. Yeah, uh, I, I I admit I am not. Uh, maybe it's because I wasn't watching when Franco was originally around when he was played by the real Franco. <clears throat> oh, but. But you know, seeing him like I like I've said, the, the this whole way that they've had it, it's definitely more of a tragedy leading up to this point. You know, in in terms of their writing him and the way they're taking him, and I I am not exactly ready to see him as a villain again. <laughs> okay, yes, you know what's interesting. So for anyone listening as well who who didn't actually watch it when when James Franco played Franco. Mm-hmm. It's almost, it was almost like he was a totally different character when he came back, and not just post-brain tumor. You know, every actor brings something different to the role, and James Franco's Franco was more of a straight villain. He was very callous, heartless, he did not care, he was not shown to really to care about anyone, um, and he sort of very heartlessly did terrible things to everyone. So I think for maybe for some people, definitely myself, when Roger Howarth entered the role i had a lot of trouble seeing him differently yeah so i think just part of that baggage is which every time there's a new actor you know you've got baggage from the previous incarnation oh yeah um and definitely there was a lot of baggage brought when roger howard came back mm-hmm. and, and as franco yeah and and that was actually my first time really seeing that particular actor because i'd I, I I knew he was on One Life to Live for like the longest time. I know he brought the character over, and I had started watching General Hospital again, like right about the time the One Life to Live characters were all leaving. Uh, you know, oh. it was like right right when they had the uh, you know the uh, Caleb the vampire slash um, 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 Stephen Clay thing where where you know Rave's mom got the stake in the heart. You know, that's about the time I started watching, so I didn't get too invested in the other characters. So, so seeing Fr- seeing uh, Roger Roger Howarth as Franco was really my first experience with the actor. I am not disappointed, by the way. <laughs> oh no, I think Roger Howarth is great, and I really liked him as Todd, and mm-hmm. I liked Todd and Carly. And then when he came back as Franco, a I thought he played Franco weirdly similar to Todd. Yeah. And then they put him back with Carly, and I just. And they, they, I mean, they did that with all the One Life to Love characters. They put their, I mean, actors, they put their new characters, they paired them with the same romantic coupling. Yeah, it's like they put... Which was a little iffy, I think, choice on the writer's part. Yeah, I mean, they got, they put Kiki, well, originally Kiki was with Morgan, now she's with Michael. True, true. And then Silas, I think he just started out as just, you know, they eventually put him with Sam. Yeah, but I mean, if you go back and watch, they were they were planning that I think as soon as they brought him in because they started off with that angsty, not angsty, sort of um, antagonisty slap slap kiss kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and Star Kiki's uh, Kristen Alderson's character Star with Michael, I really enjoyed. They had um, this. They both had their sort of dead lovers, and they kind of bonded over that. And, yeah. Um, and they really they really worked. 
Um, I really liked all the One Left to Live characters. And then it was a it was a weird transition patch there. Yeah. But, but so far, the characters seem to be working out okay. Again, you know, Franco, like I said, the tragedy. And then you got Kiki, who's caught up in the middle of everything. Holy shit. Right? And, and like, I, oh. she's about to, she's this close to tanking her relationship with Michael. Because she just yeah. keeps putting on, like, one huge lie after the other, piling them on. Yeah. And it's going to blow soon. It is. And, you know, to be fair, when she first heard about, like, like for example, the first, uh, da, 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 you know, Sonny killing AJ. I think I think uh, Ava told both of them that one, and I seem to remember. I don't know if it, I don't know if it was that or if it was something else. But Kiki's first initial reaction was to go and tell Michael, and Morgan talked her out of it because you know, and then right. Morgan, I can understand where he's coming from. He wants to protect his brother, doesn't want him to get hurt, yada yada yada, but at the same time. You know, ah, oh, Morgan, dude. It'll it'll be it would be quicker. It would be easier. It could be dealt with. You know, you and then you know that would be one less piece of ammunition that Franco would have that he could use at the wedding. I I, I agree, but I will say that I I do think well. I think he's making the wrong choice. I think sure. from where Morgan is coming. It's it is kind of a nice bit of character growth for him because not yeah. that long ago Morgan would have been thrilled to tell Michael and destroy his life. Oh yeah, because of what happened, you know, with with Kiki. Yeah. Um, so I think Morgan's in a better place and he is trying to do a good thing, and so is Kiki. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, I'm just loving Rosalie kind of judging that relationship, like <laughs> looking at Kiki and Michael, and she keeps saying she likes Morgan, but she's. She's so offended on Michael's behalf on how Kiki's lying to him that I'm I wouldn't be at all surprised, and in fact I'm hoping that once that relationship kind of goes up in flames, Rosalie and Michael are going to get together. Yeah, I, I, sad to say I, I I see that about to go up in flames too, which is like oh they were like so adorable and for a while they were doing really well you know they didn't keep anything from each other one knew something the other knew something that sort of thing and and that's a healthy relationship but we can't have that because we need drama right mm. i think the only what stable happy relationship right now is what dante and lulu yeah, let's see dante and lulu uh lucas and brad are generally stable at this okay. point okay <laughs> that's that is very recent maybe we should give that one a little more time but so yeah. far so good <laughs> okay yeah fair enough <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lordy. Uh, and, and, oh, God, I had a thought, had a thought, had a thought. But speaking of Michael, he is closer to finding out exactly who it was that killed AJ. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't because of anybody else. It was just because of Sabrina with her little talk was, with Carlos. That was awesome. I loved that scene. Yes. And now the doubts are in his mind. And it's, and it's not like... Sabrina was necessarily trying to hurt anybody or do anything. It's like, you know, you deserve to know. And she is right. He does deserve to know the truth, however hard that is. I And, and that's the thing about Michael over the years. Uh, on the TV Tropes page, he's under the Break the Cutie trope and... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. Being kidnapped as a baby. Uh, I, I think he's been shot at least a time or two. He was in prison. He got prison raped. Oh God! And now he's he's watched his biological dad die twice. Shit, man! Can't we give him a little bit of a break? Well, he is CEO of a what is it? Is it a Fortune 500? A Fortune 500 company? Yeah. Which um, eh, I don't know if that qualifies as like a good thing, but you know, running in his dad's memory. Now he's got the health clinic coming open. Yeah. Which are very good things coming out of you know, some of these horrible tragedies that he's that he's had to endure. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's nice that they fixed up the old brownstone because I I kind of remember the '90s set of the brown the '90s uh, brownstone set and it looked all right, but the way they redesigned it is just awesome. So they, they they've done a really good job with it. Oh, I'm yeah. still really entertained that no one thought to look. This is kind of a side tangent, but speaking of the brownstone, that. No one who's looking for Ava has thought to check her daughter's place. <laughs> like, she's probably, she's one of the few people in town that gives a shit about Ava. And then yeah. she's living with Ava's ex-lover, who might be the father of her baby. 
Yeah. And, and no one, no one's about to look there who hasn't been told she was there or stumbled upon them accidentally. Yeah. How how, how do they? I mean, Sunny, Sunny, I, I I know you you are smarter than that, dude. I know you are. Uh I mean, I'm I'm not a big. I'm again, I'm not his biggest fan right now, but he's smarter than that. Come on, come on. Uh I think I think if there is like any major problem with like some of the writing on the show, is that they. They use the idiot ball a little too much for my taste mm -hmm. because that's something that that Sonny could pick up. Wait, OK, her daughter's living with living with in the brownstone. She might go and hide out with her daughter. Although, on the other hand, knowing, you know, what kind of danger Ava is in, Sonny might think, OK, she's not going to put her daughter in danger. And he may have dismissed that. That's possible, but you'd think he'd at least send someone over to check it out. Yeah. You would think, but oh, so so Ava was was going into premature labor. They got Silas, and they brought him over after being knocked out by Nina, and Silas was able to stop the pregnancy. And and I love the f and I love how there's like no stop the labor. She's still pregnant. Labor. I'm sorry. <laughs> I said pregnancy. Holy shit! That was that was unfortunate. <laughs> Uh, but the, he stopped. He stopped her from going into labor too soon, and I, I just I just wanted to note that when he put the shot into her arm and after he pulled it out, it's not. It, it's interesting how there was like no little blood mark there. I mean, they could have gotten some stage blood and just like put it on there, but that that's nitpicky. That's that's nitpicky on me. <laughs> A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but that's what we do. That's what we can do. Oh, and. And of course, Silas and, and Ava, they have their moments. And it's, Which was nice to see them actually sort of addressing their past. Yeah. Because, I mean, if Nina didn't go on and on about it constantly, I sometimes for, would sometimes forget that Ava and Silas were a thing, because it's been a while since they've talked. Yeah. I guess they don't have much to talk about anymore, except for Kiki, but... Yeah. And even then, they both just talk to Kiki. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh man, oh lordy, lordy, lordy! Mm. He and, and she told him that that you know the day of conception was AJ's, the day of AJ's funeral, which <laughs> uh, well very well could be because I wonder if she banged both of them on the same day. She did. No, no, I think I'm pretty sure that was a plot point. They mentioned that she and Morgan had sex that morning, and uh... then she and Sunny hooked up that afternoon, and then I I think people found out pretty much right away, so I don't think she slept with either one of them again since then. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely that day or or shortly beforehand. Yeah. Okay, so... <laughs> yep. Like, wow! Going fa going from son to father in the same day. I mean, normally normally I'm, I'm not too much, you know, I don't mind it normally, you know, that that that's your business, but uh, you are you were in a monogamous relationship with it with the son, so um, going and banging him to banging his dad later that day not a good thing, you know. Ah. oh lordy. And speaking of Sonny and the tomb, well, well, before he gets to the tomb, um, you know, he he and Sean are talking about getting Heather out of Ferncliff, and and they've learned that Franco has the the, the same idea. To get to bust Heather out of Ferncliff, Franco wants Heather at the wedding for his own ends, and Sonny wants Heather out of Ferncliff so he, they can kill him and pin it on Heather. And it's like ah, sheesh. And it, but in the end, you know, Sonny, Sonny uh, got Sean to do it, and Sean was able to get Heather out of there, and she's none the wiser because she had no idea who Franco paid off to escort her out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, wow, something goes right for once. Yeah. Yeah, at least for Sunny. Yeah. And I have to wonder, how does she not recognize Sean? Because I'm ah. pretty sure she should have met him at some point. Yeah. You know, I, I agree, but I can't pin down. I mean, I'd have to go back and watch like months of the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to, to remember a specific moment that, that they would have met. Um. But, you know, stranger things have happened Oh yeah. by far in regards to Heather breaking out of Ferncliff. I did, like, uh, I think there was, like, a throwaway line about the new security team being harder to pay off to get out, which is why Franco had to get someone. Um, and I was glad they kind of referenced that, because when she used to sneak out all the time, I 
I just could not believe it. I was like, who are these people that are helping this woman sneak out of a hospital for the, like, criminally, mentally disturbed mm-hmm. without questioning what she's going to be doing out there? Yeah, it's like, just... Kidnapping and murdering and... Yeah, I, I, and I have to wonder who they're working for, too. Because these are the same people that allowed Luke to be duplicated. <laughs> it's like, who, who are they? Wor- who, who's really behind the scenes there? Oh. Maybe it's another, you know, WSB front and Victor's pulling some strings. Yeah. Or whoever's in charge now. Yeah. I wonder how the chain of command goes now that Victor is gone. Maybe maybe it falls to to whoever Luke is, you know, the fake Luke is supposed to be. Do you mean in the WSB? Yeah. Or in, okay, because I was like, well, Helena, obviously. Um, in the WSB, oh, yeah, no, or... hopefully Robert will take it over and clean it out. Yeah, that would be nice. Because I remember when the WSB was, I think they were introduced when Robert was introduced back in the 80s with the Ice Princess story and everything. And they seemed to be generally good, mostly ineffective because they weren't there. Uh, right, right. Well, then, when did Anna, because Anna joined the WSB at one point, right? So she must have been fairly effective. Yeah. Or did I, she mostly, was that mostly when she was gone from the show, she went off to join them? Um, I know when she joined, I, th- I know she was a double, I know she was a double agent between the WSB and the DBX, I believe. Oh. At one, and, and with the DBX, she worked for Face On. That explains so much. Yeah, and, and his obsession with her. Oh, God. You know, I watched a lot of, um, Days of Our Lives has a lot of good quality clips of storylines from the 80s on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And I, I wonder if, if GH has some good ones, because I might have to oh, check yeah. out some of that old stuff with Anna. Yeah, they do. Uh, I haven't looked so much for Anna stuff yet. I've mostly been looking for, like, the Luke and Laura and the Cassidine mm-hmm. stuff myself, because I, I, I love those. <laughs> But I'm pretty sure they have some. I mean, they've—I think they've got stuff dating back to the '70s. Wow. You know, it, it's just a matter of looking it up and finding them. Oh, so where were we? Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> s- speaking of Luke, do you want to talk about um, Tracy and Jerry and and yes. Lulu? And that's those scenes with um, oh and Ned at the end. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> because Tracy gets back and and she's decided, okay, you know what? You know, we're going to give Jerry what he wants. And she tries to get it from Ned and, and pe- begs and pleads. And Ned's like, fuck no. And, I love Ned. Yes. And, Al- and and she kind of scares Alice into it because Alice has a thing for Mr. Luke. You know, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's a romantic or sexual thing or she just really likes him. But yeah, she's been a big fan of his for a long time. That's been well established. Yeah. So it's like, OK, I'll, I'll, I'll help for Mr. Luke. And then Jerry calls while Lulu and Ned, you know, no, uh, Jerry calls while Lulu walks in and she just grabs the phone from Tracy and and just says, hello. And on the other line is Jerry. (laughs) And and it's one thing I, I have to wonder at some point, who, how many people did he have sitting there watching the mansion? Because it's like he almost knew who – it's like he knew who was in there at any given moment and was able to tell the look outside. And when they all went outside to look, there was something. I, I'm going to guess that they got the real Luke out of Miss Cavage and dumped him there. Just That's to throw my them, guess, yeah. Uh, yeah, just to throw them off their trail. Yeah, because then that would – you know, assuming he's coherent and you know can speak mm-hmm. – um, that that will throw the suspicion off of fluke, fake Luke, because, you know, Luke was going to be like, what? No, I've been locked up for months. It wasn't me. So they're going to very quickly realize that fluke was not Luke and start to maybe hopefully finally figure out who's really pulling the strings. Yeah, and that's when Alexis is going to learn that when Julian says he's not working for Luke Spencer, he is telling the truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just so amused by that. It's like technically you really are. is. Technically, <laughs> yeah, but that's like not the point. How about I know, this? Okay, I know. let's talk about then speaking of Julian and Alexis. Go Julian ahead. blackmailing Ned and not being able to take no for an answer from Alexis yeah. this week. Not yeah, that cool, is like dude. it's like, dude. I, I I sat there looking at him. I'm like, dude, what the fuck, man? I mean, like, I, 
he likes to turn his, you know, smoldering bad guy, I'm gonna take you up against a wall thing. He likes to turn that up for her. But this, I don't know how he thinks this is gonna play. Because blackmailing her, you know, other potential love interest does not scream like, oh, swoon, take me, I'm yours. Like, it's like she's oh. pissed, and rightfully so. Yeah, I, I would be too. I mean, it's just, why, dude? I mean, I, I, you know, well, Sonny doesn't have control of the paper, but I, I don't know if Sonny would do it. If he had, could, if, if Sonny was in this position, position, I don't know if he would do it. I mean, this slander in the newspaper thing? No, he just threatened them with, uh, like, dumping them in a river or something. Yeah, because <laughs> that's how, because that's how it works. Uh, I mean, so, he's literally trying to do that with Franco right now. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, and then, and of course. You know, Ned and Julian eventually just start having a just just a brawl in the living room, which is all off screen. It's like, ah, that would have been kind of fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially since when Alexis does walk in on them, it doesn't look quite like you know a no holds barred like fist fight. They look more like you know they're like scrapping around on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> so it looked like a pretty silly fight. It would have been fun to watch. Yeah, and and you know, I think if she was going to use a Thunderdome reference. I think a better one would have been like, hey, can you two boys just get beyond Thunderdome? And at this point, everybody who is listening is groaning. <laughs> I held mine in. Yep, that, that, that's fine. <laughs> I would not have blamed you if you had groaned. <laughs> everybody else would have joined you. Oh. Should have sent Ned to his room and dragged Julian out by his ear, which, which she kind of did, metaphorically speaking. Yeah. Um. And he still is not really, I mean, okay, he told her the truth about Jerry, but he's still not really coming clean with her. You know, like, withholding things is pretty close to on par with lying Mm -hmm. in this, you know, about his business and what his his dealings have been. And she knows it, and he, I don't know what he thinks is going to happen. She's not. She's gonna come back to him, maybe if he's super convincing. But then he's just gonna lie again, or she's gonna ask him a direct question, and he's gonna deflect, and it's gonna blow up again. So I don't know yeah. what he's playing at. I don't know either. I mean, other than possibly protecting her from, you know, this 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 fake Luke guy. That yeah. that's about the only thing I can really find excusable for it. Well, if he wants to protect her, he should maybe you know stay away. Yeah. At that, least until this is all resolved. Yeah, that that is also a good thing. That way you don't you don't have to lie to her, you know, at least more than once. You know, you might have to lie to you know make sure she stays away, but you don't have to keep lying to her. You'll she'll be safely away from you. She won't be in any danger. Molly won't be in any danger. Nobody else in his family will be in any danger. And bonus points if he waits till you know whoever it is is revealed. And we've taken care of all the bad guy stuff. Then he can not only tell the truth about himself and what he did to protect them, he can tell the truth about Rick. Yes. Which means Molly will no longer blame him for Rick's death. Well, once they find out Rick is still alive. But yeah. assuming they clear it all, Rick comes back, then Molly will hopefully be less uh, opposed to Julian and Alexis's relationship. Yes, and there you go. And you know what? That you can get just as much drama out of a plot line like that. Mm-hmm. So instead of keeping it all like this and just throwing everything to shit, and and here's the thing that I've actually noticed: Ned and Alexis. It, it's nice to see them back together, but they're I don't think they're back at official couple status at this point. They're just really good friends, kind of leaning on each other for a bit, you know. Mm-hmm. And and you you know that they're both. While they do have a lot of history and a lot of respect for each other, Mm -hmm. you can tell that they're mostly with each other because of the uh, unavailability of their first choice option. Um, Alexis is not going to let herself get back with Julian right now because of too many lies. And Olivia told Ned she wasn't ready, and Ned, being a gentleman, coughed Julian, coughed, took him at his word, took her at her word, I mean, and is trying to move on with Alexis. Yeah. Of course, Olivia then goes and changes her mind and goes to try and tell Ned, but she walks up a little. Yeah. yeah. Granted, Ned didn't. Ned and Alexis didn't know, but. Right. And Olivia, I just I love Olivia, and she's had shit luck. And I just I just have to say, if 
uh, Obrecht and Madeline and all these people can get out of jail on these ridiculous charges, then you know who else can get out of jail? Johnny. Johnny Zakara can get out of jail and come back and sweep Olivia off her feet. There you go. <laughs> that just needs to happen, like, yesterday. Well, there you go. Oh, so, speaking of Madeline and, and Obrecht and Nina and them... Uh, oh, or, or, oh, wait, before we go over there, we go over there. I, I did mention uh, Sunny at the Crypt because during this oh, week, of course. the date, you know, the anniversary of Jason's death had, had happened. And, and of course, there were characters talking about the event. You know, Faison shot him in the back and and just dumped him in the river. And, and, and of course, we all know Jason's really back, but nobody else knows. Although Carly has a, f- I'm sure Carly has a feeling because of how easily Ooh, yeah. she was able to talk to Jake. <laughs> oh, but and, and so of course Sonny goes to the crypt to you know kind of talk to Jason a little bit, and his guilt is eating him more and more and more about what happened with AJ, and he sees Connie. <laughs> that was so nice to see her. Yes, and she wasn't a blonde. No, she was not. I was like, ooh. <laughs> I I enjoyed her a lot. I didn't see very much of um, the woman who played Connie before, mm-hmm. but um, this actress Kelly Sullivan, who played Connie most recently, I really enjoyed her a lot, and I thought she handled that whole storyline so so well and it was a really nice treat to see her and Sonny kind of interacting and even though it was probably you know in Sonny's head or you know in his um uh a manifestation of his guilt it was a really nice moment between the two of them I thought yeah and and just oh and of course Sonny one of the things he goes on about is, is like if he had to do it over again he would you know he would he would kill AJ again because AJ was a curse to everybody he loved and it's like that some of that was brought on by you, you asshole. I mean, I mean, I mean, I don't remember the exact details. I, I know I was watching at the time, but I don't remember the exact details of why Carly was, you know, wanted, wanted so much to keep Michael away from AJ. Yeah, he he he's a fuck up, and and he's a, he was a bit of an alcoholic. And sure, that that's a dangerous environment to bring a kid up around, even if it's in the quarter main mansion where you could just stuff AJ into a wing and leave him all to himself and bust away from the kid. But, 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 however, I would think it is more dangerous to put him with a father to to put him with a father who is a mob head. I I argue that Sonny is more dangerous than AJ because of that. I you I I. Do you, yeah, I mean, if obje- okay, objectively, yes, but when has Carly ever looked at anything objectively? This is true. You know? <laughs> and Carly, and, and I wasn't watching at the time, but from my understanding, I, I think it was more than just, oh, AJ's an alcoholic. I don't think Carly and AJ were really in love. I, I think they, in fact, hated each other. Mm-hmm. And if you hate someone, I'm not saying it's like what they did to AJ was justified, but I can totally understand why Carly would want would yeah. not want her son to be raised by this guy that she despised so much. Yeah. Um, and Sonny definitely is dangerous, but I love what uh, I think Olivia pointed out. And, and I've, I've said this before, and I was just thrilled to see someone on screen acknowledge it, that Carly's the only one who's ever really like embraced Sonny's lifestyle. She's like the mob wife, you know? Everyone else he's ever been with has been like... There's always come a point where they're like, you know, no, this is too much, or I want to walk away, or, you know, we don't fit in the same world. There's that whole thing with, um, I think, Kate pre-Connie existential crisis um, DID thing, uh, where, you know, Sunny tried to go with her to some, like, fashion event, and, you know, it just doesn't work, but Carly's, like, in the trenches with Sunny, you know, planning hits, you know, they have those bumps in the road where she, you know, sends Morgan off to military school, but yeah. Carly choosing Sunny will never surprise me in uh, in any circumstance she will yeah. always choose sunny yeah which it, it's oh which just makes certain you know it can make certain relationships that carly might have outside of sunny or vice versa you know they could be just that much more tragic cuz it's like yeah they're good for a time but she's going to go back to sunny and it could also become a little old hat too so and that that's where that danger lies well y- yes lies. and no i mean 
for some couples, it some couples, I think, you know, the writers will do that, and you're just kind of like, why? What is it that pulls these people back to each other? Like, please get over it. Let's try some new... Let's change it up. With Carly and Sunny, I think it makes so much sense, because they are kind of toxic and kind of unhealthy, mm-hmm. but you see why they're drawn to each other and why they keep drawn keep getting drawn back to each other. Yeah. At least I see it. And so even when I don't like how it's being written, kind of like right now, I I get it. Yeah. With those two. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's just oh. Whew. <sighs> oh. And so we're okay, so we got we've got that. <laughs> Do you wanna talk about Carly and Jason? Yeah. Or Liz and Jason? Yeah, uh, one last one last thing I do want to bring up when it comes to that. It's pretty much Sonny is admitting that with Franco out of the way, he's got a clear shot to Carly. Oh yeah. It's like, yeah, we knew this. Fine, thanks for joining the rest of us and admitting it. <laughs> I mean, it's just, uh... but yeah, Jason, you know, he he's waking up and Liz is tending to him, and Obrecht being Obrecht, she's like, okay, um, you don't have any insurance, so we're gonna have to discharge you soon. And Liz is like, what the fuck? You know. Uh, so to help cheer him up, she took him on a wheelchair ride, even though he was, <laughs> it was it was it was fun watching the two of those the two of them get, you know, get Jason into the wheelchair. Well, well Liz get Jason in the wheelchair, rather. You know, it was, it was kind of neat and sweet. And they take him to the art room where Franco's been working. And it seems like the name Franco is, is kind of triggering something in his head, though we don't see what it mm-hmm. is yet. And 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 it's there that you know Liz has to go off to her own thing, and he's sitting around there just kind of thinking. And that that's when Carly comes in. She starts having the conversation with him, not realizing that it's Jason, and she just unloads everything. Yeah, I, I've been um, enjoying Liz and Jason's scenes mm-hmm. since he's been back. And I'm annoyed that I've been enjoying those scenes because I never liked them together. Um, but <laughs> Carly and Jason scene, I was able to enjoy. No, yeah. no holds barred. And it was so lovely to see her being really honest yeah. and she admitting that she knows Jason would not approve. Yeah. And she she is sort of bouncing all this off of Jason, and she has no idea. And, and it's nice because my first thought was that um, this Jace, this version of Jason, he's like, you know, lighter and happier and he's more jokey. And I was like, you know, this isn't really like the Jason that we all knew. And then I was like, you know, the Jason that we knew and loved had a kind of shit life. Yeah. And it was, it was pretty rough from the moment of his, I don't want to say, well, birth, I guess, you know, post-accident, he didn't remember anyone, he had a really hard time adjusting, so he was kind of forged in fire, so to speak, yeah. and then his life was kind of a shit show. Mm-hmm. And so this maybe is a version of Jason Morgan, may, or maybe Jason Cornemain in some ways too, mm-hmm. time will tell, who who isn't quite so damaged, possibly. Yeah. And so it's kind of nice to see a lighter side of him and to see him helping Carly. You see, kind of see the undercurrent of their relationship, which I hope, hope, hope they will get back very soon. Yeah, it is. I, I seem to remember, you know, when I was watching him before, that you know he seemed a lot more stoic to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, yeah. he had his lighter moments. He he knew what he knew. He could smile. You know, he, he had feelings. He wasn't like a complete robot. But he was definitely a lot more stoic. This Jason he doesn't have so much of it. He, you know, like you were saying, lighter, <laughs> jokey here and there, and it it is refreshing. It really mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And and I don't rem- I was Elizabeth Painter before. I don't even remember. I yeah. barely remember. Yeah, yeah. She had. She used to have a studio. Um, I think Jason hit out there at one point. Oh my god, yes, I, I, I'm i remembering now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, remember the, the creepy doctor, what was it, Doctor... Oh. Uh, she had a brief relationship with him, and then he turned out to be working for um, someone. Oh my god, I'm totally blanking on his name. I want to say Ethan, but that's not right, because Ethan, Ethan Lovett. Um, no. 
you know, the tall blonde doctor guy that like rescued her on the beach or something. And uh, I wasn't watching at the time, but I'm not quite sure. The only name I can they think of about is art a lot. yeah, yeah. The only name I can think of in terms of doctors that that are not on the show anymore is well, recently because I can remember Steve Hardy no problem. Uh, but I'm thinking like Matt Hunter maybe. But, no, not him. No, but probably someone else. Um, but uh, but yeah. Oh, and. Uh, Ewan, Dr. Ewan Keenan, played by Nathan Butler. Thank you, Google. <laughs> there you go. Google is our friend. Let us embrace it. Uh, oh, lordy, lordy. Uh, but yes, um, Art. Right, Liz, Jason. Art. Yes, and so, and, and of course, he's trying to encourage her to go back into art and do that. And I, I, I See, that's one of the things I missed in the years that I wasn't watching. I missed her going from artist to actually you know becoming the nurse mm -hmm. i missed all of that oh and and oh god i'm actually remembering one where uh we you know when lucky and nicholas and elizabeth and emily were all together back in like the late 90s early oh, 2000s yes oh my god those were those were that was it was awesome it was it was great to see you know lucky and nicholas you know acting more friendly more brotherly towards one another despite the fact that their families had bad blood between them I mean, justifiably so, but mm -hmm. still, you know. And it, it was nice to see the teens all being friends as opposed to, like, being in 5,000 variations on the same love triangles and, like, fighting over guys or girls, you know? Yeah. And they're doing that even with the kids now. And the great thing about that sort of Fab Four mm -hmm. was that when they did have conflicts, it wasn't necessarily about, like, them all having crushes on the same people. Like, Lucky and Nick had some very you know, justifiable issues because of their families. Mm -hmm. You know, there was there was that whole thing where they all went on, like, an adventure to, like, track down and, and, and get revenge on Liz's rapist. You know, they yeah. they had adventures and they had drama that wasn't all about a love triangle. Yeah, and in fact, they actually did eventually find Liz's rapist, but after, yeah. he was the same guy that tried to blackmail Emily. Yes, and the, the photography and the whole bit and... Mm -hmm. And and it was like holy shit, great to see that resolution. And and at the end, it was like yeah, he's put in jail, but he he was never. I don't think he was ever charged for the rape because I think it had been too long or something. Yeah, they might not have had enough evidence. But you know, I wish they would not revisit the exact same storylines, obviously. But I wish they would do some of that adventure bonding with like Molly and TJ and Taylor. Yeah. I was. One of the reasons that I was kind of glad that Rafe died <clears throat> what? Oh. was <laughs> sorry, uh -huh. sorry, Rafe, um, was because I was like, oh, thank God, no more obnoxious love triangles with the teens. Maybe they can get some new storylines. But then, of course, they transferred all that to the little, little kids, which I'm really hating. Yeah, um, that, that, they are cute, but only to a certain degree. It's like... I think even Namio has, has pointed out that some of the conversations that these kids have, it's like they should not be having these kinds of conversations. It, it's mm -hmm. just these are, these are more teenage or adult things. I mean, yeah, you kids, right. you have crushes, and, and some of them can be overdramatic. Hello, Spencer. <laughs> but the, 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 it's definitely I mean, more of an adult mindset. It's like the adults right. are not writing for the kids very well. In that no, they're part. not. And what kid like has that like attention span? You know, when like real children, you know, when they like get a girlfriend or a boyfriend, like five seconds later they've broken up, and then they're like crying about something else, or what? You know, like it's it's not realistic. It's I think they're weirdly like sexualizing the kids' storylines, and th they've got great stuff to work with that doesn't have anything to do with ew gross eight year olds romance. Yeah. You know, they've got Spencer's issues with his mom and how Brit is becoming this kind of mother figure. Mm -hmm. um, just no matter what Brit and, and Nick's, what their state, the state of their relationship is currently, you know, he always kind of seeks Brit out. Yeah. You've got um, Emma dealing with her parents' divorce. You've got Jocelyn dealing with her mother's imminent marriage. Yeah. And you've got Cam, I don't even know, possibly something with Jason coming back, um, maybe bringing up stuff about Jake. I don't know what they've got going on with Cam besides Emma, but I wish they would give him something because I don't mind the kids having storylines. I just wish they weren't 
that. Yeah, it was like one of the best things that they did with them back when uh, Heather Weber was running around and she scared them with a chupacabra. Yeah. That was one of the best things. And then they all run into Franco, who's just looking for her so he can find her. And he's like, have you guys seen her? Yeah, she's, she's at Windermere. Okay, got okay some, thanks. They've got some talented kids right now, and they should yeah. use them more effectively. They can. They should. They need to. And they've done it. They've, they've done it at times. You know, Emma's got some great scenes um, about her brother, about, you know, uh, Emma, um, Emma's relationship with Sabrina and with Robin and, and you know, Patrick yelling at her like they they have used her well so I know they know how to do it yeah they just need to get back to it yeah you know childhood crushes are a thing sure but these are not just they're not written as such mm. oh and and we have not, we've touched on her a couple of times we haven't really dove right into her take that as you will Nina oh dear <laughs> able to she is able to 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 both be scary and, and and just completely idiotic at the same time and i think she's happier this week than I've, we've ever really seen her plotting you know the destruction of i guess silas and whoever else and plotting with franco specifically you know she was just gleeful in that last scene and not even in a creepy i mean it was kind of creepy because of what they were talking about yeah but she didn't come off as creepy almost she just seemed so genuinely happy about what she was planning and about franco and that moment where she like nearly leapt into his arms but then oh, kind of yeah. pulled herself back and like kind of punched him playfully <laughs> so funny and of course as usual her mother doesn't approve well, of course. <laughs> oh which I think if her mother doesn't approve of something, I think, and I think she's kind of doing this, but I think she should just do the opposite Yeah. of what her mother wants, always. Well, which, of course, if, if Madeline realizes this and she's smart, you know, it's clear Madeline, I mean, granted up to a certain amount of zeros on a paycheck, she's not really fond of helping Nina steal Ava's baby. Right. You know, but, you know, she's the, she can be bought, as, as Nina found out. And she she actually tracks down Rosalie, who is about to tell Michael where Ava is, because oh, yes. Michael because Michael is on the warpath. He's trying to find out what the hell happened, you know, and confront Ava at the very least to get some answers, you know. And before he has a chance to hear it from Rosalie, Madeline just storms up and just puts on this attitude like I am the most important person, not realizing that Rosalie is sitting with a damn CEO of of. A fucking ELQ. <laughs> and if she knew, I don't think she would much care. Probably not. At least not in this case. You know, she's getting too much money for it. Mm -hmm. She's getting too much money to care. And she's able to not only – she's able to get Nina to tell her where – Rosalie to tell her. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Rosalie, I'm meaning. Rosalie to tell her where Ava is. And she also knows Rosalie's secret. Yes. Okay, I wanted to talk about this because Rosalie – is relatively new to town, mm -hmm. doesn't know anyone yet. So what, I'm really curious what the secret could be because it can't really affect anyone we know already in town personally. You yeah. know, it's not like she's betrayed someone. So I'm just wondering what the secret is and how it coming out in Port Charles could affect her. Um, because the only connection we know about that she has besides Nina mm -hmm. and I guess arguably you know Michael Morgan and Kiki – sort of, is um, I think she had a phone call with her father one time that she and Morgan yeah. talked about and how she was having some issue with him. So my guess is that it has something to do with her family, but we haven't met any of her family. So I'm, I'm wondering if they're going to be introduced soon yeah. or, if, um, or if we're ever going to learn what her secret is. Yeah. Although I had an idea, and it's just kind of just out of the blue, probably insane troll logic thing, or maybe not so insane, but... At one point, I thought, okay, what if she's a Cassidyne? Like Victor had an affair with oh. with a Hispanic woman, and the produ and that union produced Rosalie. So she would be like a greco rusky Latina woman. But w it, and that would be the secret, or you just think that might be her family history? Well, her family history, and that would end up being a secret. The secret, and it, like if people knew who she was or whatever, then you know. You know, people might treat her badly or something. 
I, I'm, I'm guessing. Again, it, it, it's kind of a work in progress. But but yeah. I have a feeling it, it it is tied to somebody in town. I'm sure it's gotta be. And didn't um didn't Madeline say it was something like I can't remember what word she used, but like tawdry or something. I forget what word she used, but it seemed to me to imply it was like something that Rosalie had maybe done. Hmm. So I, I think even if it's related to her family, I think it's got to be more than just who her family is. Yeah. Um, let, let's see, tawdry. That makes me I, think. What? What? I could what, be wrong. Was not the word, but. Yeah. Well, if, if with that kind of language, it makes me think. Okay, are, are they really going to go for a route where, you know, Madeline and Nina are are basically blackmailing her with slut shaming because 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 that's where i'm thinking and for those who who haven't leapt onto that particular cart yet i'm thinking like maybe she was in porn maybe she was a stripper maybe she was a prostitute and she's really ashamed of it she doesn't want people to know i suppose that's possible but no wait hold on (laughs) if she was in like if she was stripping or something Mm -hmm. she would not have needed nina to pay off her student loans this is true this is very she true. Would have been, she would have been doing that to pay for school in yeah. the first place. Oh, unless. Probably. Unless. Un- unless Nina, you know, lured her away from that and promised, you know, to help pay off student loans. That's uh, possible. You know, that, yeah. that, that is always possible. We might be jumping a few steps ahead. We don't have any real clues, I suppose. Yeah. Again, again, we. But it's it, fun to speculate. Oh yeah, the, the, you know the, the darkness is over there. We're firing all the magic missiles at it. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! So, uh, is there anything else that we've that we've missed this week? Or, um, I'm I'm trying to think. I'm I'm looking at my cheat sheets here. Um, not seeing much. I think we hit all the things on my list. Yeah. Uh... Oh, I, I I did have a comment. Holy shit, the teens are still alive? Because we haven't seen them in so long, and I think TJ popped up at the beginning of the week. Oh, yeah, he did, because he, he had this conversation, confrontation with his mother, mm. and it's just, ah, I mean, I'm going to be, I, I, I am anxious to see what happens when when uh, Jordan is finally able to tell TJ, nope, I wasn't, I was not trying to work for the mob, I was DEA all along, and and I, know, I have a feeling I know how TJ is going to react. Well, well, why couldn't you just tell me? You know, because because admittedly, I would probably have that pretty much that same reaction too. Why couldn't you just tell me? You know, True, I mean, but I think he's also going to apologize profusely because he's been a real shit to her. Yeah. And now, I I guess it is arguably understandable, mm-hmm. except that he seems to give Sean the hitman a pass. Yeah. If he was mad at both of them for their professions, I would be like, okay, that's justified until he finds out the truth. But he's like, you know, Sean's kidnapping people and trying to conspiring to murder people left and right, and TJ seems fine with that. <laughs> I, th- I want to say that the biggest difference would be Sean may be a hitman, but he's only he only kills who he's ordered to kill. Mm-hmm. And as far as I know, Sonny does not put hits out on children. Whereas Jordan True. is helping push drugs, even undercover, she's helping push drugs, and those drugs get into the hands of teens and children. Again, okay, true, but I mean, I, it I doesn't. Like, it I does, like that's again a thing where we're, you're looking at it like objectively and quantifiably, mm-hmm. and he's a teenager who's looking at the two most important adults in his life, and I don't think he's like writing down the pros and the cons quite like that, you know? Yeah, I it's. I don't know. I cannot figure out. I cannot justify why he's not upset with Sean for his line of work. Yeah, that... and it involves doing such terrible things. Yeah, I mean, it could be a it could be a fact of matter of just you know maybe maybe Sean spun it to him in a different way that got TJ to understand. Okay, you know he's he's these only bad guys that we're going after. Yeah. So and then that could be it. As well. Okay. So maybe, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> well. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, that that was it. We got about like a minute left. <laughs> uh, we're we're still um. This week, this week's gonna be fun. It's Halloween week. <laughs> I'm loving the promos, and, and I like the one that they had like over the weekend, where where they were like talking about like past Halloweens or whatever, and they ended with. 
with uh, Heather coming into Franco's hotel room, and Franco just screams. <laughs> he has got. <laughs> I've got to go and find that clip. I may even have it on the computer. I've got to go find that clip and just like make that into a ringtone or find a find a reason to use that somewhere because that is just awesome. I mean, I've already got. I've already got a. Uh, like when Heather was walking around and doing her thing with Franco and just annoying the fuck out of him. He has this like one look where he's like his hands are out and he's like silently screaming at her. I've got to – I made a gif of that one somewhere. I've, I've got to like put it up on my Tumblr or whatever. I Again. just can't wait to see all the costumes. Those oh, have been a lot of fun the past couple of years. Oh, yeah. And of course, ABC is owned by Disney, so they have – oh, my huh. God, so much so many options. I mean, you've, you know, I mean, Disney, they own ABC, they own Marvel, they own Lucasfilm, they own, oh God, just a lot. Uh, I'm, 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 I, I look forward to seeing what they pull out. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, especially, I really hope, I know Carly said no costumes at the wedding, mm -hmm. but that better not mean that like half the cast doesn't get costumes. Yeah. I want to see those costumes. I do too. Oh, so with that, we are going to get out of here. Um, thank you guys for listening. And it, it's, you know what? I It, it has been really fun. It, it just, oh, God. It, when, when Namio is finally able to, like, pop in and all three of us are going, oh, God. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> I can't wait. Yay. Oh. So in the meantime, uh, if we wanted to find you on the social media, Julia, where could we find you? GH hyphen musings at uh, dot tumblr dot com. Sweet, and you really should go check it out. And if you wanted to find me on social media, you can find me at Gomer Two One Double X, both on Twitter and on Tumblr, and you know most other places. Plug it in. Odds are it's going to be me. Um, if you want to find more of my stuff, my shows, my podcast videos, what have you, go to rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. You can find them both all the way over there. And of course, if you and this show is also on iTunes. If you're not already listening it, to it on iTunes, you can go over there, hit subscribe, and you can get them like the, you know pretty much within an hour or two after I after they go live, which is pretty damn awesome, I think. Um, and if you like this show and you want to help support it monetarily for things like new equipment or or just you know, new materials, new artwork, or, or what have you, or even just help put food on the table, uh, go over to patreon.com slash gomer x uh, For as little as $1 per production, you get things like behind-the-scenes monthly vlogs, little previews of things, uh, like everybody who is a patron of mine got a preview of the, new, uh, of the new Thespian Talk title card before it actually all went live, and it's, it's pretty good. People, people seem to like it. <laughs> so... And, and things like that. I'm still working on a few other things to work on. And, of course, if you pledge at the higher levels, then you get more things. In fact, I've got a I got another uh, review request to work on for the person that's at the highest level. So that's that's going to be fun. Oh, so and, – and, of course, speaking of artwork, um, still working on upgrading the artwork. We're still waiting on this one. But um, – but the artwork that has been upgraded so far that you see around is done by the beautiful and talented Becky Hopkins, who has her own Patreon account, uh, patreon.com slash Becky Hop, uh, has links to her DeviantArt page, uh, her, her uh, website, and you throw some money at her. She'll do some artwork for you. She'll do like sketches. She'll do character pieces. She'll do title cards. She'll do posters. And if you throw enough money at her, she will do a 30-second animation for your face. Did I mention she's an award-winning animator? She totally is. You should go check her out. Oh. So with that, again, thank you guys for watching and listening, If depending on where you're actually you know, taking in the show. And until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Julia, signing off. The Port Charlie Podcast is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.